ridiculous. How do, how do these companies make money? Seriously, Google, Google makes money by knowing where you are, what you're buying, who you're with, who your contacts are, who you last talked to, where you're eating your, your dinner. This is how everybody makes money. And, and to think that you're going to get these free services, seriously, how valuable to you is Google? How often do you Google something to find out anything? You know, where the next clothing store Everything. is, what's on yeah. the movies, um, you know, something to help your children with their homework. Constantly. Invaluable. What does it cost you? Zero. Zero. Please, nothing is free. Nothing is free. I mean, my parents told me that. I told my children that what you are paying is your privacy, please. So to be shocked that Facebook is selling your data or allowing people to have access to it, I'm sorry, that's just foolish. It's utterly foolish. So if you want to use free services and you're paying nothing for them, why then are you upset that they're taking the data that you input and selling it? I mean, to expect privacy in this world where hackers can see anything, the government can see anything, um, that our, our telephones, our, our smartphones are designed uh, to spy on us. That's our design. They're designed. Pardon? They're designed to spy on us. Of course they are, because how again do they make money? They, they have application interfaces that let them access your location, your contacts, who you're calling, um, what you're buying, why? Because marketers pay a lot of money for that. Now, that's okay if, in fact, um, all you get from that is someone trying to sell you shoes. But when hackers use those same facilities or the government, then we lose our privacy. We have people watching us because these operating systems are designed to find out as much about you as possible. Did you watch the congressional hearing? No. <laughs> it would be nonsense. Mark Zuckerberg's got nothing to do with this. It's ourselves. You know, we, we want everything and we expect everything. Well, the world doesn't work that Interesting way. Interesting different point of view you're well, taking I, I, I don't think it's a different. I think that most technologists would agree with me that, you know, once you log on to the Internet, your privacy is gone. So you have a choice. Keep your privacy or go, okay, well, I'm going to be very careful about what I input. You know, people ask me for my phone number. I just don't give it to them. You know, certain information you do not get. And if I cannot get onto your site, then I'll go somewhere else. So the only, uh, are you pretty active on all social media sites right now or I'm mainly sorry? just Twitter? Are you active on all social well, media yeah, sites I, or I mainly Twitter? I have a Twitter? Facebook account I'm not too active on. I have a YouTube channel. Uh, but mostly it's Twitter. Mostly it's Twitter. Okay. So whatever Mark Zuckerberg said or doesn't, you know the information is going to be used, you know, for whatever organization is going to contact you. So that's the consumer needs to know that if you're going to do it, if you don't want to do it, get off and don't share your stuff with people that they can't use yeah. against you. Right. Don't, okay. get on, don't get on social media sites. But they are valuable. So, you, me, I don't expect privacy. I, I was not at all surprised that, that Facebook You was, don't expect privacy. Of course I don't. I mean, if I want privacy, I have to take care of it. I have to be careful about what I input. I have to be careful about what, what uh, media sites I'm yeah. on, what uh, machine I'm using to access those sites. Uh, if you input your name and your address, um, your age, you better expect everybody in the world to have access to that. Whatever you put down on any media site, you must expect the entire world to see that. So I'm very careful what I put down. Do I care if the world knows this? No. If I do care, then I don't go on. So, so let me ask you, when you were running McAfee for that, uh, from 87 to 94 uh, until you resigned, that seven-year period, uh, uh, was there ever times when somebody really tried to break into a computer system of somebody's and you got alerted where you were so concerned we said I got to pick up the phone and call the NSA or FBI did that ever happen all the time all the time all the time. so that was a norm for you well of course I mean that was a, that was when viruses were first coming out and they were destroying people's systems you know destroying all of your data um, doing terrible things so of course when you got into corporations people were losing corporations were losing millions of dollars so of course they called the FBI got it if you don't mind us going back, who were you in high school? I'm just really curious. If I went to high school with you in 10th grade, <laughs> junior year, who was John McAfee in high school? Oh, I don't know. I was, I was a crazy character. I got almost straight A's. I studied hard um, and did not go out for sports. That was it. I was a nerd. Truly, you were a nerd. So you were not you know, partying. You didn't have the girlfriend. You weren't no, I playing had, the sport. I had girlfriends, yeah. I mean, nerds had girlfriends back then, you know, if you were smart. You know. <laughs> 
<laughs> Got it. So after high school, you know, you're, you're, when I when I study some of the thing, uh, things that you you pursued, you were, uh, I think you worked Xerox, Lockheed, and you were NASA, right? Prior to starting uh, uh, McAfee. So at what point you said, you know, I just think I want to start this antivirus software. What inspired you want to start McAfee? Well, that was that was sort of an accident. You know, I had um, uh, I was living with my brother-in-law in Santa Clara, California, and he was reading the local newspaper about this thing called brand new thing, computer virus. And he was reading it out loud and said, give me that paper. So I read the article and I thought, good Lord, what is this thing? I mean, a virus that could replicate itself, live, move from one machine to another. Well, that was fascinating. Um, so I sat and I thought about it. How on earth could someone do this? And then it occurred to me how they did it. And at the same time, it occurred to me how I could stop it. So I just wrote a little program and I, I ran a bulletin board system. That was bulletin boards were the precursor to the Internet. You know, I had 16 phone lines coming into my house. I mean, I only have 16 simultaneous users. But people would download software from one bulletin board, upload it to another, and in a matter of days, millions of people could, could access things. So I wrote a little program. And um, uh, two weeks later, five million people were using it. Two weeks later? Two weeks later. 1987, 1987. two weeks later, five million people were using it. Yes. You saw that kind of growth in two weeks. Yes. That is unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Well, I was the only one that had a program for it. At that time? At that time. And, and so immediately everybody said, I need to have someone like this to protect myself. Everybody, right. Got and it. And I thought that was, that, was, that was the end of it. And then two weeks later, another virus occurred called the Jerusalem virus. And then they just started coming hot and heavy, and I had to keep updated uh, with all these viruses. So pretty soon everybody was using the McAfee virus scan. Unbelievable how this whole thing gets started. Mm -hmm. So an accident. We're just purely a, accidental. Yeah, well, I, I yeah. didn't expect anything to happen. I thought, well, here, if anybody's worried, run this program. Uh, when you were going at that time, were you connected with the jobs and the gates? Was there a relationship there or not at all? No, you were, you were completely... Not at that time. Not no. at that time. Mm -hmm. Got it. And, and uh, uh, didn't Intel end up buying McAfee in 2011 for some $7.7 .7 I think $48 a share, some number like mm -hmm. that. And now, today, you can't get on a computer without seeing McAfee somewhere. That's your last name. That's your name. That's all over the place. And so today, you know, you hear and you read up on it. How do you feel about the product now since you've been away from it since 1994? What do you think about the product now 24 years later? Oh, um, well, antivirus software no longer works. That paradigm that I invented does not work in the modern world of the Internet and hackers and social engineering. Uh, new hacking techniques have obviated uh, virus scanning software. It's, it's non-functional, yet... Everybody continues to buy it because that's all that they know. Um, but the paradigm is, is passed. And I was the first to say it. You know, five years ago, I, I went public and said, virus scan software is useless.